Government and opposition forces in Syria show little sign of letting up in their civil war. Government pilots have bombed a gas station in the suburb of Damascus. They killed dozens of civilians. This is minutes after a petrol station was hit on the outskirts of Damascus. Bodies burned or mutilated beyond recognition. Dozens were killed and many others injured. Their deaths add to a toll which the United Nations says reached 60,000 by November last year. That's based on seven sources over five months, but the figure may still be low. The government is stepping up its campaign to push rebels away from the outskirts of the capital, Damascus. And its shelling goes on across the country. This is Idlib, where men race to get an injured child to a field hospital. Nearby, in Taftanaz, is the wreckage of a building. The town's been bombarded for months. And now, activists say the al-Nusra Front and government forces are battling for control of the military airport. But now the UN Human Rights Office says that it has an accurate roll call of the dead, startlingly bigger than previous estimates. The UN employed outside specialists to go through casualty lists compiled by six human rights groups, as well as the Syrian government. They've come up with a list of 59,648 dead until November, fully identified, the UN says, by first and family names and the date and location of death. Many more have died since then. Most previous estimates, including the one used by Britain, say between 40 to 45,000 have died. The destruction and death, the UN says, could have been avoided if President Assad's regime, this is one of its strongholds in Damascus, had not ruthlessly suppressed what started as peaceful protests. The UN Human Rights Commissioner gave a specialist data company reports of deaths in Syria from seven sources. Now, those sources included the Syrian government, the Syrian Revolution General Council, the Syrian Human Rights Observatory, and other do organizations documenting this conflict. And there were, in total, reports of some 150,000 deaths. Over five months, the team went through all of these reports, and where there was a first name, a last name, a date, and a location for that death, then that death was noted. And that work gave rise to this figure of nearly 60,000 deaths. When you look at those figures, they show some horrible trends. In the summer of 2011, around 1,000 deaths were occurring a month in Syria. By the end of the period studied, that number had gone up five times, around 5,000 deaths a month occurring by November 2012. Homs seems to be the area where most deaths have occurred. Around 12,000 people thought to have died there, around 10,000 in rural Damascus. And all of these numbers could be underestimates, according to the analysts. Ms. Pillai went on to say, collectively we have fiddled at the edges while Syria burns. While many details remain unclear, there can be no justification for the massive scale of the killing highlighted by this analysis. Ms. Pillai went on to cite how difficult it was to get reliable data and said that it was most likely that this number was actually an underestimate of the number of dead in Syria. You know, collectively, internationally, whether you talk about the UN or individual governments or neighboring countries, we've all failed. And this conflict has gone spiraling downhill. Again, what this data shows uh, released today is that the number of casualties appears to have gone up fivefold between the summer of 2011 and the summer of 2012, five times as many people being killed. 